Hello folks and welcome. Today in the workshop I have a Chinese elm, Ulmus parviflora. This is a cork bark species. Um, the subspecies is Nyeri or Nyer, some pronounce it either way, 2.0. Um, at one point in time this tree was a very large tree and it was chopped back in potentially an attempt to make a broom style. Um, I'm not really sure, but as you can see, the tree itself cut back here and it was not wrapped at the time it just looks like it was cut and whatever branches grew grew um, I can only assume that they were trying to make a broom style out of it but what has happened is um, it's died back in several different places um, it was really really root bound when I initially got this tree it has some really nice quirky bark on it that was what attracted it to me plus the the bari is very very good or the root flare is very very good um, but it's got some unsightly parts of the tree up here. Um, it's got really large bulges um, around this cut area and all the branches are on one side and it has this lower branch here on this side. To me it needs a lot of improvement. Um, when I got the tree initially a few years back um, it was in pretty poor shape. Um, it was in a five gallon growing container. Um, it, had, it appeared to have been in there for quite some time it was very root bound and the top was starting to die back. Um, all this growth that you see here was not on the tree when I received the tree. Um, it was basically down here in these areas and you can see where I had made some cuts um, to try to get some energy back in the tree to do what I'm going to do today. Which is I believe what I'm going to do, although I hate to lose this really nice craggy quirky bark here that this tree has up high. I know it will take quite some time to get that back. Um, <clears throat> I think in order to improve the tree, we're going to go ahead and turn this into a broom style. Uh, what I'm thinking is, uh, as far as root flare goes, in choosing a front on the tree, it has um, a couple nice fronts on it actually. This side has some potential to be a nice front. It's got some decent roots spread down here at the bottom. Um, but the quirky bark's not as prevalent back here in the back down low as it is um, on the opposite side of the tree. So my thought is that this side of the tree, something along the lines of there, is going to be the front of the tree. Now the base of the tree is quite a bit, quite large down here for, I don't know, Chinese elm of this stature. It's maybe three inches in diameter if I had to guess. And where I perceive the tree being at when I make my initial chop is going to be somewhere in this general area. So this whole, the whole top of this tree is going to be removed down to somewhere in here. That way I can utilize maybe just below this branch. I'm not going to keep this branch. I'm going to actually eliminate this branch as well. Somewhere just below here is where I intend to cut my low portion. And my high portion is going to be somewhere up in this general area. I'm going to keep as much of this bark as I can on the tree at the same time removing this unsightly portion of the tree. Um, you could attempt to do something with this, the top of this tree to potentially make something out of it, but the, in all actuality, in my opinion, doing what I'm doing to the tree now is actually going to benefit the tree in the long run versus keeping it in its current state and trying to work with what we have. So. That's what initially I think we're going to go ahead and do. I'm going to take a look at it a little bit longer and make a final decision and then we'll come back and visit the tree after the cut's been made. Okay. The cut has been made and I've chosen the front and here's the result. As you can see, I made a cut in the V-shape, but I not, did not make the sides even. I have a shorter side and I have a longer side. I intentionally did this to create more appeal once the tree is full grown. This side, of course, is going to have a primary branch. This side will create a secondary branch. Now, from what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to seal the wind with seal paste. I'm going to wrap the entire thing with some cellophane. Now because this is offset, 
on either side in order to keep the cellophane from wrapping over and preventing some damage to the buds that are going to be down in here I'm also going to put some reinforcement up through here number one that's going to help keep this from swelling once the branches do come out and start growing um, and number two is going to prevent these buds from being damaged down here and, and if I wrapped it without the reinforcement it would just kind of end up coming over this and not allowing these branches to grow straight up which they're going to need to do for this stop This, I chose this height, number one, because that other branch was right there. That first branch that we saw was right there. And it had an unsightly bulge there, and I didn't want to have that in my final design. And number two, the tree doesn't have a whole lot of taper from where it was initially to where the cut is now. The taper is pretty much the same throughout the entire tree. So by doing this a little bit lower, I'm going to create a little taper a little bit better taper than what initially would have been if I was to cut it, made the cut clear up here. Right there's where the initial branch was, just barely below that is where I've made that cut in order to get rid of that unsightly bulge that would have been there if I had cut it up above there. So, I'm going to go ahead and do the sealing to it and go ahead and wrap it. I'm just going to use your basic saran wrap type cellophane but you have to remember to wrap it very, very tightly. Um, I actually have another product that I may actually use with instead of the cellophane initially. Um, we're going to give it a try. I need to get some other materials together to go ahead and finish this portion, so we'll be back in a few minutes. Here you can see what I've done in order to protect the branches that are going to be down here on the low side. What I've used here is just a simple chopstick that you can get at any takeout restaurant. The, what I have here appears to be electrical tape, and it is electrical tape, but it's not the, your usual electrical tape that you see every day that you would think of when you think of electrical tape. It's actually a high voltage electrical tape, and I have a small sample of it here as well. And the benefit of this stuff is it does stick to itself, as you can see, but you can also take it and stretch it and wrap around things, and you can get a really, really tight bond with this stuff. So what I've done is I've taken this tape and used it to hold these in place. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the entire thing and leave the top open of course in a saran wrap type situation and then I'm going to take your basic run of the mill electrical tape around that. This stuff here is quite expensive compared to your basic electrical tape so it's a good idea to use this stuff. I use this sparingly in applications like this. I use this almost exclusively if I'm going to be bending a branch, a larger branch, on a juniper or a pine or what have you. I'll wrap this in place of raffia and then I'll put the wire around this. It is rubber, rubberized, I guess you could say. It is rubber, a type of rubber, but it also has the ability to adhere to itself. So instead of using raffia, I use this stuff, and it won't leave a wire mark. Um, it supports the branch just as easy as raffia, and it's just as easy, if not easier, to remove, because essentially what you do to remove is just unravel what you've raveled up. Um, so it's a really neat little product, and it's something I've been using for quite some time in Bonsai, and I, th I think it's a really neat thing. And it's, it's not extremely expensive, but it is not cheap, as cheap as regular electrical tape. So, as you can see, the wound seal has been placed. The chopsticks are on here to protect this lower portion. Now I'm going to wrap the entire thing in cellophane or saran wrap, if you prefer, or any kind of plastic wrap material. And then I'm going to go around that with basic electrical tape to keep everything nice and tight. Um, here you can see a portion of the nabari. Um, very nice, wide flare of the roots. And then it slightly tapers up to this location. There's a little teeny wiggle here. Also, I want to address this situation here, this moss. Some people like the look of this moss. I find that it actually deteriorates the bark that's underneath it, so I will be removing this moss as well, as lightly as I can with a wire brush. And hopefully I can get that under control and keep it from growing up the trunk of the tree. 
I'm um, just going to have to keep on it. Sometimes you can spread a little bit of lime sulfur solution on there, it'll kill the moss back. I'm just going to do the most invasive m method, which would be to just brush it off with a, s a stiff bristle brush. And um, when we come back, it'll be complete, and um, we'll have a little bit of a discussion on it. We'll let you know what I'm going to be doing next season with it, and uh, that will complete this, this presentation. All right, the tree is finished. I've applied the uh, plastic wrap and the electrical tape, and we have an opening here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let the, the cut paste dry before I put it out in the elements because they're calling for rain this evening, and I want to make sure it's nice and dry so when it rains, it doesn't go down, get, the rain doesn't get down in here and wash it away. I don't have to worry about it puddling because the corkiness of the bark and the chopsticks are going to act like little channels to channel the water away from this cut site. Went ahead and cleaned the moss off of it. As you can see, the moss did erode away some of the quirky bark that I had in here, but that's okay. I believe that it'll develop rapidly over time. This species tends to produce really quirky bark really fast, and that's why I like this particular species of Chinese elm. Um, this spring, I'm going to wait for some buds to pop, and um, at that point in time, we'll revisit the tree. We'll talk about selecting um, specifics for the design. I'm going to fertilize it, fertilize it, fertilize it, not only with the uh, inorganic, which are these little gray pellets here, but I'm also going to use some fish emulsion and I'm going to use some liquid fertilizers that are just basically a plant and shrub fertilizer that you can get at any garden center store as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do another a quick 360. Uh, this one's done for, for now and we'll revisit this tree once it goes ahead and does some sprouting for us and figure out where we're going to go from what we have now. Thanks for watching.